Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, February 13th, 2024 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, we got an interesting new variety of the Mirai bot that has been hitting some of our honeypots lately. It does appear to add a new vulnerability that, at least based on my Googling, appears to be affecting routers made by Byte Value. Byte Value is a Chinese manufacturer. There is always a chance that these routers are being sold under different names as well and that similar vulnerabilities uh, can be found in other routers that are not sort of obviously uh, recognizable as uh, made by byte value the underlying software development uh, kit the real tech tech software development kit that i believe is being used here based on the url had a number of sort of similar vulnerabilities in the past the vulnerability being exploited here is a simple code injection vulnerability that then downloads the actual Mirai bot that will then go out and probe random IP addresses for various uh, exploits. As I submitted the particular sample uh, to VirusTotal, it was not an already characterized uh, binary. However, many antivirus tools immediately recognized it as Mirai. And Dark Reading is uh, quoting a proof point in stating that uh, they are observing an ongoing Azure cloud uh, compromise that uh, does target senior executives. So it's not the Azure cloud that's so much compromised, but individual corporate accounts that are being compromised here by exposing senior executives uh, to uh, phishing emails. That has always been a little bit sort of a weakness here where uh, senior executives are often not uh, very technically savvy or generally knowledgeable in order to recognize uh, these uh, phishing emails but sometimes do have excessive rights uh, to some of these cloud environments so compromising their accounts is always an interesting uh, target this particular wave of compromise apparently started back in November. Two-factor authentication, if you ever heard of that, appears to be something that's really useful in particular for people like vice presidents, CFOs, presidents, and CEOs that are apparently being targeted here. And CISA, the Cybersecurity Infrastructure Security Agency, and OpenSSF, the Open Source Security Foundations, have partnered on basic principles to secure package repository. This has, of course, been a huge problem with uh, PIP and Python, uh, with NPM, and all of these uh, different package managing systems. Talked about them many times before, where malicious packages were submitted to these uh, repositories. So having some basic principles that uh, these uh, software repositories are agreeing on would be quite helpful to secure the software supply chain. These principles are sort of structured by different maturity levels. Uh, for example, how users are authenticated, how authorization works, what capabilities they have. Like, for example, uh, can packages be withdrawn if uh, they're uh, found to be malicious? So uh, some good ideas here, and we'll see how well this works. Nothing sort of outrageously new here, but really putting some structure around these security features that will hopefully make it easier to identify repositories that are following these guidelines. And then uh, we have a couple of vulnerabilities to talk about. First of all, an update to Postgres, the SQL uh, database. When I first read sort of the headlines around it, it sounded a little bit more dangerous than I think it actually is. It does allow arbitrary SQL command execution, but it's not a SQL injection vulnerability or enabling a lot of SQL injection vulnerability, even though that may in some cases happen. The problem here is if a user is able to execute the refresh materialized view concurrently uh, in 
Postgres, they may then be able to execute arbitrary SQL functions because of the way privileges are dropped by this command. So probably tricky to exploit and not really exploitable through something like a web application in my opinion. But uh, if anybody knows anything different here, please let me know. And finally, another interesting vulnerability in Microsoft Defender, a simple additional comma may trick Defender into not blocking malicious JavaScript. Also interesting vulnerability, not super applicable if you keep Defender updated. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.